So a longtime follower of the channel, Dennis 8060M, the battery man of Denco Batteries, sent this case in and we had been discussing a kind of different design. I'll get you some technical specs, but uh, right now we're just going to take a look at the actual case itself. Inside of this case, we've always been talking about the wasted space that is... <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, the wasted space that is inside of the lid of the case. And what Dennis has done, the genius that he is, is he's come up with a battery pack that will fit in here. This is three individual battery packs. You can use them one at a time, or you can plug them in all three together with this distribution block and get an extended runtime out of it. But we'll go into all those details uh, a little bit later. And I have a 100 watt radio to go with it, and that's why I've got the Cartena today for 100 watts of power. I'm gonna get this thing all set up, hang on. Okay, so I have the antenna tied off to the picnic table. I've got some RG316 coax running into the FT891. And then I have the antenna going off up into a tree. You're not going to be able to see it in there, but it goes up and over the branches. Then it comes down over here. Let's take a look over here to the other end because the other end is kind of important. You can see the bag for the throw weight there. And then you can see maybe this bright orange cable in the air. Cable, rope. There we go. There it is, right there. And out here where the antenna joins, the rope is eight feet plus in the air. I can't reach it, but down here towards the T-post, T-posts are about four foot tall when they're put in, or when they're out of the ground. Um, I've got it tied off and this is right at, where is it? Right at chest level here. So bright orange, it's gonna be hard to miss that. So I like the fact that this is very bright orange rope. 13.1 volts on battery power. <laughs> Data U 7074. Wonder what I was doing last time. Let's switch that out. Man, what are these folks arguing about? Government and taxes, everybody's favorite topic on ham radio, right? All right, here is your SSB out level to 100, and here is your HF SSB power to 100, and HF power to 100. 73 to uh, Missouri, Victor Echo 6, Charlie, Quebec, you are shit. Kilo, Mike 9, Golf. Uh, Kilo, Foxtrot 4, can you give me phonetics? We are actually operating a remote station in Colorado, which is why you're doing it so well. Um, Cheater. Kilo, Mike 9, Golf. Station ending in Golf again, please. Kilo, Mike 9, Golf. You are 5-9 into Northwest Wisconsin. Kilo, Mike 9, Golf. Uh, thank you for your contact. You are 5-9 in Panther City. Thank you very much. 73. All right, I promised you I'd get you some technical specs on this battery. Again, this thing comes from AD60M Denco. Uh, Dennis is the man when it comes to batteries for ham radio applications. He's been experimenting and practicing and all kinds of stuff, and he's got way more into this time-wise and effort-wise and knowledge-wise than I could ever hope to catch up to. Dennis is amazing. Check out his Hamdom Thoughts podcast where he interviews a ham, and they talk about Ham. Dennis does a fantastic job of doing that podcast, very laid back, and just makes you want to talk to him. I was on the show, he was on my show back when we had the old Ham Nuggets format, and that's where we came up with this idea. This is the Denco QRP Bat Mark II. It's a simplified multiple 3 amp hour battery set to be used separately or in parallel with a power pole distribution block. Dennis and I were talking on the interview that we had about everybody making go boxes and everybody leaving the space in the lid of the go box unused. Sometimes there might be a little bit of a hump of, of gear that comes up out of the top of the out of the top of the bottom of the go box that consumes that space. But most of the time that gear is left flush with the top of the bottom. Again, top of the bottom. I don't know. Bottom of the top. 
top of the bottom. And so we started talking back and forth about some ideas, and this is what we came up with. This is the Nanook 910 case. There will be a link to this case in the description down below. This case is ridiculous. If you thought that the Pelican cases were good, the Nanook case is even better. Kind of the same type of case, but just, just that much better. The battery model itself is labeled QRP because individually this would have been a QRP battery, but Dennis Dennis put three of these together to make it a QRO battery pack, and it will work with the 891. I just happen to have an 891, so that's how I married this thing up. Total battery case capacity, 8.5 amp hours rated. Power pole block is 3D printed with 45 amp connectors. This is a fantastic design. Five power pole ports, uh, three for the battery, one to charge, and one to discharge. So that way you can hook it up to your solar charge controller, or you can hook it up to an additional power device, like a tuner. He says it's designed to fit uh, the Zygu G90, the Yaesu FT857, but it definitely, as you've seen in the video, definitely holds the FT891. Some specs on the battery. This was created September 12th, 2021, and it has... Uh, K2 cells, which are 26650, so they're a little bit bigger than the 18650s. As a result, they have some more capacity. 2.85 amp hours each, 3.2 volts, lithium iron phosphate, LIFEPO4. The BMS is the DYKBYH2204A, 50 amp, 4 serial, LIFEPO4, separate port BMS. Configuration inside each of the battery packs is 4 serial, 1 parallel. Uh, the new, since the last time he made this, is a new BMS and a flat configuration, and the owner is KM9G, Steve. Here's some pictures of the assembly going together. Uh, you can see the batteries in their battery holders. You can see them welded together. You can see the tape around the edges for protection, and there's that BMS that Dennis was talking about. So you can see the power pole distribution block. Here's how those things go together. These are called right angle PCB mounts. They come in two different flavors, uh, a top and a bottom, because they're meant to be stacked top and bottom for two power pole distribution blocks. And then uh, the tangs go down into your PCB, into your circuit board. And you can do all kinds of wonderful stuff. In this case, Dennis took these things and his ham genuity put them together in this fashion. This is beautiful. And there is a QR code if you want to scan and get to this page, but it will also be linked in the description down below. This is a fantastic kit. I was having fun out there. I love when they do the special event stations, uh, especially when they have some connection to some piece of history. Today, I listened to WW1USA, listened to a couple of other stations, listened to some guys on 7200. Got exactly what I expected off of 7200. Always a fantastic day when you take a ham radio out in the field. You never know what you're going to get. Sometimes band conditions are great, sometimes not so great. I was out for a couple of hours and was able to make a bunch of contacts. I kind of didn't share those all in the video because a lot of it's just listening and, and just enjoying what's going on and, and what people are talking about and hearing the differences in propagation and things like that. There was a time when, I don't know what happened, I swear this guy was omnipotent all seeing whatever he said hang on a second the band's going away and then the band shut i have no idea how he knew that but the radio went silent i couldn't find anything i had to change antenna configurations and reset stuff maybe it's just a coincidence i don't know either way there is a video right over here i think you will enjoy next thanks for being awesome we'll see you in the next one